We're um, in a new year, of course, and the question is both for the country and for you and me, what is this year going to look like financially? I'm talking about the economic prospects, the financial prospects for 2023. Now, the general view is pretty negative that we should be looking for a spiral of inflation and higher prices, but at the same time, uh, economic uh, stagnation, and that's a problematic combination, right? That's, in fact, reminiscent of the very late 1970s, uh, kind of the Jimmy Carter era stagflation, and uh, certainly in terms of uh, economics and the stock market, doldrums. Uh, and um, so that is one outlook. But I don't want you to think it's the only outlook. And I just read an article. This was in the New York Post, but I, it may be a syndicated article. It's written by a prominent money manager. Uh, his name is Ken Fisher. By the way, Ken Fisher um, has um, was, had a very successful column in Forbes for many years. And uh, basically, Ken Fisher says, no, no, it's not 1974, it's not 1976, it's actually 1967. And what he means by that is that in the 1960s, we had a, um, um, a similar environment in which inflation appeared to be galloping out of control, there appeared to be a certain degree of political um, turmoil, and everyone thought that the stock market was going to um, go flat uh, or even go into, go into a regression. But, says Ken Fisher, the stock market, in fact, had a stunning rally. Instead, it went against expectation. And Ken Fisher's point is that very often markets do this. In other words, markets operate... Uh, not just based upon what the economy looks like, but also what people expect. And people's expectation often runs to extremes. So when the market's going up, people become wildly optimistic. Everyone starts buying. They think things are going to keep getting better. And things do get better, but not all that much better. And so similarly, when things are looking bad, people tend to go into a kind of funk um, you know, we've seen recently, for example, some prominent figures in the banks, people like um, Jamie Dimon um, and others um, saying things like uh, there's going to be a deep recession and things are going to be terrible. But says Ken Fisher, let's look at the lending activity of the banks. Uh, uh, does their lending activity match their rhetoric? No, they seem to be still making loans. They don't seem to be particularly worried about defaults. They're expanding, in fact, the scope of their loans. And so their actions would seem to suggest um, a higher degree of confidence in um, the fact that the economy will plow ahead uh, than their rhetoric would seem to, would seem to suggest. Um, I want to add a factor that Ken Fisher doesn't talk about, but, uh, but it's the political factor. He alludes to it, but doesn't really get into it. And that is that midterms in general, and in particular, you could call it divided government, uh, is good for the economy. Now, we saw this, for example, in the Clinton era, where you had a Democratic president, true, and by the way, with all kinds of spending schemes up his sleeve. You remember Hillary, Hillary Care, and so on. But you had a Republican Congress blocking him. And so the block and tackle of the Republicans paralyzed the political class. Nothing could really go through. In fact, the only thing that went through was a pretty good thing, namely welfare reform in the 1990s. Clinton was kind of drag kicking and screaming into that one. The point is this, that we can be pretty confident that legislatively the Biden agenda for the next two years is dead. This is not to say that Biden cannot do harm. He can continue to do harm at the border. He can continue to do harm through some executive orders. But the scope of those executive orders is, is limited. Uh, he can obviously continue to do harm in foreign policy. But economically, which is what we're talking about, Biden now basically has, 
his hands tied behind his back. And whoever ends up being the Republican speaker, the simple truth of it is that Biden programs are not going to go through. That's it. In fact, these programs, these bills have to begin in the House. They're not even going to be getting out of committee, let alone getting to a floor vote. So so that, I think, bodes well for the market. Uh, what do I think? Look, I'm not a forecaster. I don't pretend to know. I certainly take steps in case things go bad to hedge our finances, make sure that we have adequate hedges so that we, uh, we are diversified. And if we lose money in stocks, we gain money through, through gold or through real estate and through other ways. Uh, but uh, I also think that there is a case to be made that 2023 financially, economically will not turn out as bad as people expect.